Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. Another little one of my envelope, folio, fold things that I just love doing. Um, love all these folds and all the rest. So this little one I've been playing with, so we'll just undo him. So I've put ribbon around it. You don't have to. Originally, this was going to be an envelope, but I was going to stamp a, an address here and a return to sender type thing up here. And in the end, I put a an eyelet and wrapped it with some ribbon. So to start with, without the ribbon, it just looks like an envelope again, front and back. It will just tuck into my journal either that way or now that I've got all this in like that. So when you open it, now it's all done from one, one, 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbooking paper, um, all bar the tags. So all the pockets, everything else, one sheet of 12 by 12. So double-sided, of course. So you open it out, you open it out, and then of course it folds out. I'll move it along so you can see it. So all my little pockets have all been done from the scraps that I had left over. As I said, it's only my tags that didn't. And so the majority of my tags I stamped so that I didn't have to bring in too much extra supplies. I've, yeah, look, all right, I lied. This one's a chipboard mannequin that I've covered with some other paper. Um, old um, sewing patterns, or well, not so old, just sewing patterns, which is what I've actually used on the front as well. And then you turn it over and we've got more tags and the reverse, of course, of the scraps to go on this. It is so easy. So this, where I've used the other of the um, sewing patterns. So if you can see if I bring that up. So this is a tag, 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 fold it over like that, you can see it, a tag, and <clears throat> a tuck, tag, journal card, whatever you want to make it. On the other side, you've got two more tags. So lots of journaling areas if you want to journal on the back of each of your tags. Otherwise, just eye candy and pretties. So it is very easy. As I said before, it is literally just from a 12 by 12 double-sided sheet of cardstock. If I flick that there, it'll hold it down. I just sit it to the side. Right, so I'll grab my pattern for you. And I've used just some scrap paper. I've got a whole heap of scrap 12 by 12s that are white on one side, so they're years old, because you don't find them that way that often these days. Um, and I tend to use these for my patterns. So this is where I started playing around with it the other day. And if you look at your 12 by 12, this would be your 12 by 12. I don't know if you can see that. So if I sit it down here, your 12 by 12 sits in here. So you'll have a little patch just here and you'll have a little strip left at the top. And that's what you get all your pockets and everything out of. So your main front cover that'll go round is this. So again, I've written all your sizes on there if you want to screenshot it and take it off as a template. What will happen, these are your folds. This will fold that way. That'll fold that way. There's your basic envelope. If you want from that pattern, adhere those and you've actually got an envelope. Okay. So all it is, set that one aside, you've got a basic rectangle. From this fold, I've gone up one and a half inches and measured along. You can see, I don't know if you can see my original pencil lines from where I was doing my workings out. This is about where I wanted it. Then I want a little bit of a scoop. This was my top, so it's one and a half inches from this fold to this. At that point, I've measured my halfway mark and I've gone and got myself a circle. Now, I tend to have this, which is 
I don't know, 15 years old or more. I don't know whether they're still doing it, but look, use your double-sided tapes, use glass, use a mug, anything that's a circle shape. The one I've used on this is a three and a half, I think if I turn that over, yeah, it's a three and a half inch circle. And so I've just sat it on my template so that it's not quite half the circle, like there would be half the circle. I don't want the full part. I want it about three quarters of the circle up there. And that's what's given that. So what we'll do is we'll actually do it up. So here's my next piece. <clears throat> 12 by 12. I cut it up last night ready for it. No folds yet. No scored lines. So you can see where it's all come together. If that goes in there. The, the numbers might not match at the moment because I put it around the other way. Um, but you can see that it would have been a 12 by 12, just so that you see I'm not lying. Right. So across the top of your 12 by 12, measure down five and a quarter inches and just chop it straight off so that you've got a full length, five and a quarter down by 12 inches in length. And then all you're going to do, let's grab my scoreboard, is score that one at each three inch point. So you'll end up with three score lines. So you'll sit it on your board or your mat with your ruler and your bone folder, etc., and just score three inches, six inches, and nine inches. Yes, I know you can turn it over to your valleys and your, and your mountains and all the rest, but you should know by now I'm lazy and I'll just score them straight as they are. So from that one, I've got my three, three scored lines. Okay, I want, I want, I want, I want my smaller one. I want that as my outside edge which means I want, that will be my inside. So I want that one to show, don't I? Which means it'll be that way, that way, that way. Yes. Does make sense, watch. <laughs> and fold it over. Yes, so I will see that side when I open it. Okay, make sense? I'm hoping. Right, so with this one, this is just now. If we look at our template, five and a half inches down. Okay, so if I sit that there, you can see it. So I've cut off that from that 12 by 12 sheet again, five and a half inches. And then back over to about nine and three quarter inches. So five and a half by nine and three quarters. Make sense? Right, so from that, I'm going to score. Here's your score lines. Where can I sit them so that you can see them as well? Sit them to the side there. You can still see that, can't you? Right, so I'm going to score in here three and three eighths, which is just awesome, isn't it? This one, which is two and three quarters. I wrote them down as I was working them out. Let's go that way. Yeah, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters from the left-hand side. So quarter, half, three quarters. So one score line down there. And then at six and a quarter which will give you your three and a half down here. I'm hoping. Right, that's it for scoring. I'll put that away. Right, so now I've got this. This one will fold in here. This one will fold down there. So it's this one we want our little circle template on. As I said before, do yourself up a template. Go out one and a half. Draw a line. 
and then put your circle in there. So for this one, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to trace it straight on. Because now I've got my template, I can. And just to make this a little bit quicker for you. So if I sit that there, so that it's not quite there, that's lined up with my score line there. Grab a pencil, sharp pencil. Always use a sharp pencil when you're tracing off or going around templates because otherwise your pencil will give you a fatter edge and you're not actually on your lines then, are you? Right, scissors. Here we go. So just cutting around. Doesn't matter if it's not straight and it's a little bit wonky. That's why we ink, because it takes the eye away from the wonkiness. If you don't want to ink, you don't have to ink. But for me, because, sorry, did I hit the, the camera there? Um, I have lots of wonkiness. So you can see when I'm cutting my circle, my scissors are straight, more or less. All they're doing is going down to make the cut, and it's my hand that's moving my other piece. So as we go around our circle, it's my paper that is moving, not really my scissor hand. Right, chuck that piece away. So here we have now, and I've done it upside down. Would you believe that? Did nobody realize that at the time? All my numbers are upside down. Should have done it that way. So let's do this one that way as it opens that way, which means I will turn that one upside down and stick him that way. Yes, and I want that the other way around. No, it has to be that way, and I want them to fold that way. Oh, I'm all over it this morning, aren't I? So we'll just refold them that way, because I want it to show like that when you open it, yes, and then the different one, and then that one. That's what I want. We're all over it. It's fine. Told you it was easy. <laughs> so in essence, that's it. If you didn't have pattern paper going a certain way, so much even easier. Right. I found with my first one, even though I had wonderful measurements and all the rest, that this little guy was a little bit close for comfort there. It's fairly good with that one, but to give myself some more wiggle room, I'm just going to trim just a sliver off, which will just give me, yeah, I'd much prefer that about a one eighth I don't know if you can see the fold, the fold line. So you can see that it's about that far down. What I want to do with this one is just round my corners. Like so. Now, if you've got um, uh, We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper, whatever they are, you'll find that with this side, when you've put your little circle on and made this, You'll get your corner chomper in here. I don't have one. I don't have the strength in my hands to play around with them, so I just use my standard. Um, but what I have is, and you'll notice, a standard one, be them whatever type size, okay, whether they're this type of thing or this type of thing, won't allow you to get in between here and here. So what I've done with mine is I've got just a piece of acetate. That's off a bit of packaging. And I've rounded a corner. Then I use that one as a template. Sit it on, draw around it, and then hand cut them. I know it's probably a long way around for a shortcut. But for me, it works because, as I said, I don't have a corner chomper and all the other... Corner rounders are too big to get into these sorts of areas. Okay, so now we've got this guy and we're going that way now. So for all the left-handed people out there, this is for you. See, so I've made it for my daughter and my husband. 
All right, this one's going to adhere straight onto there, and it's so easy. A little bit of glue. Now, you can do this as you're going or do it at the end. I tend with my other one, my full one that I've finished, to decorate and then adhere this last bit in right at the end this last bit this bit in right at the end because um i find that it's easier to actually work on when it's not with the whole book if that makes sense so we'll just go down give it a little bit more you'll notice i'm not inking with any of this one because i thought yeah you've all seen me ink anyway um my original one yes i inked so I'm going this way for this one, aren't I? I'm just going to fold him back in. And I want that in the middle. Again, if I'd inked this one, I would also ink the... I just want some... Just get some paper clips out, because then that can hold it while I'm actually talking. So lift that up. Just slide you guys in there. While that's drying, I don't have to hold it then. And, um, right. So, back to this one while that's just drying. So, I've inked this one, as you can see. But what I also do is I ink my folds, which then makes this easier getting it in and I've done this completely around the different way so I'm all over the show today all right so it means that it's easier when you're trying to match things up to see where your folds are so I always tend to ink my folds so let's just do this a different way then all right so we're going that way we're going that way we're all different all right so from the scraps and I had that and that left out of a 12 by 12 sheet. Okay. Oh, you can see where I haven't trimmed off the barcode bit properly. Oh, well. So, on this side, I'm going to use these ones. So that they match in with that. On this side, I'm going to actually use these ones. Make sense? Okay, so I've only got two on that side because that's my front cover that I want something else on. And we'll find something. Um, oh, there's bound to be something on my desk. We'll find it. We'll very quickly decorate it up. But just to show you, that not with all the ephemera, just with your pockets and all your bits and pieces. So with this one, if I just chop that, in half at its six inch mark because I know that it's I know that it's 12 inches right so I'm not worrying about that one I want to do those ones which is what this guy will do so if I sit you there you know me I never really measure anything i want to go there and i want to go there i always put a little thumb hole in mine just so it, look it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easier i'll lift you out it doesn't mean that it's easier to get your tag out but for me it just means that it's something else going on so when I'm doing mine, mm -hmm. this bit I always measure because my eyes could be off anywhere. So I will tend to sit it down. And of course, with this one, I need to go a certain way because my pattern paper is going up and down. So if I put that on my grid, this is my center line. You can see I've gone even sided there. I just need a little mark there. Do the same with that one. Put it on there so that it's about even. Make my centre mark. I could put the two together, but 
That's just thinking too much, I think. Little bit out. And this one's just a little half inch punch. But it's something, see, and I automatically go to pick up my ink. I'm not inking this one. Remember we said I'm not inking this one. So, straight down. Oh. Just going to make this one a quick pocket. That's my front cover, isn't it? No, it's not. I'll jam all over the show with this one. Look, when I picked this paper out last night, I went, oh, that's awesome. Love the numbers, love the colours. Oh, yeah, but then, didn't really think it through, did I? It was late last night, and it's now, oh, well, it's not that early this morning, but I got it ready last night prior to going to bed, and then got up this morning, did the housework that needed to be done, and then um, thought, right, I'll come in because I'm fully prepared. No, I wasn't fully prepared, was I? See how easy. <laughs> right, so we've got our other little bit. So again, because this one is um, a directional patterned paper, I can't really make my little tuck that I made on that one. So we'll just use this one as full pockets. I've got to admit the other way with non-directional paper was a lot easier. Um, it meant that I could turn my papers any way I wanted to. Uh, so there's those little pockets. Pockets? Pockets? Whew. That could have been dangerous. And all this is is about a one and a quarter inch because it was what was left over from the initial 12 by 12. So I bust it. Where am I going? The I want. You're my medium. Middle. There. Make sure I'm up the right way with my numbers. This is just an old, um, I think it was Kayser Craft paper from quite a few years ago now. But yes. And that one. All right, so we'll stick these guys on. I haven't been covering that lid, so it might go up, might not. Now, here we go. Down. And that one. Now, you could make this any size you like. You don't have to get it out of one 12 by 12. They're dry by now. Um, it could be larger. It's just this size tends to fit the majority of the journals that I do. So this is the size that I usually work on. And that's why they, I tend to be able to get things out of a 12 by 12 and bits and pieces like that. Because most of my journals are around about the same size. Um, but, you know, you could make it smaller. You could make it larger by all means the sizes in the, for the template are as a guide only play around with them make them larger make it longer you could do exactly the same glue down there you could make it exactly the same width but longer to fit in a longer journal right so i've got all my pockets sitting in there so now i want a front cover bit in there and I want two pockets on this side. Now whether I go with my I'm going that way so I think I'd like it to go up and down. Up and down. I've got five and a half inches so I should be able to yeah that'll fit. If I just mark and measure that at the fold and I could do Longer ones in this. All right, so we'll cut those and then play with what we want. One, two. So I've got quite large ones 
in that one. Now I could have full size pockets. I could do one one side, one the other. Um, I know what we'll do. How about, how about we do a double pocket, a very quick and easy double pocket. So if I just chop that like so, so I've got two little pieces there. I do my, because I want my little thumb holes exactly the same with this one. So I will need to do them together. So if I mark just one, which is that one, set them on. Oh, sorry about my fingernails. Um, I spent the day of four hours coffee and tea dyeing two days ago, and they're still stained. I don't wear gloves, as you can see. And I'm very good when I start, and I'm very careful, and I use spatulas getting things out and all the rest, and then, you know, an hour or so in. It's just all hands in. But um, it's still in there. So... Right, so if this one goes in here and that one goes in there like that, I've made a double pocket. So all I'll do with the top one is adhere the side bits. I know I said I wasn't going to ink, but just so that you can see what we've got here. If I just ink that bit. Oh no, I'm sorry. I said I wasn't going to ink, but it just got the better of me. Um, I'm just using um, ground espresso at the moment because my walnut stain has emptied again and I've got to get more. All right, so I've got two here and it doesn't matter where I go with that as long as my thumb hole covers that one. So out of a very small piece of paper, I've been able to create two. And I don't want to adhere this bit down. I want them so that it'll tuck in behind. And I find the easiest way for it is to actually adhere these together so that they're one thing and I can use my grid. So I just need a tiny little bit of glue up here, which is where it's going to sit on that one so just like that sit this straight on your grid can you my dead and shot yep so sit this straight on your grid hoping that it's straight if i go on that line we might be a bit better i'll put the bottom section on a line how's that all right and all i want to do is cover my thumb hole which is about that one Keeping it straight on my grid. Trying to. Yep. And straight. So what I've ended up with is a little double pocket. Using very little paper. So now to adhere it onto my actual journal, book, envelope, whatever. I will create that as the pocket. And what it'll do, I'll grab a tag in a minute and we'll have a look. Oh, sitting that down there so it's centred. And what will happen with that one now, let me just grab a tag. Now, oh, might be easier if I just grab the tag box down. Um, I don't know if those ones fit in, they don't. Get a smaller one. There we go. That's the size of the tags that I used in the other ones. And they're just um, cardstock that's been cut. These are actual, I don't know if I can peel them apart. What these were were papers from paper pads that I know I won't use in a pink fit, but they're single-sided paper pads. So I've adhered the two pages together to make them a bit more sturdy and then cut them all into tag shapes. So you'll see now what I've got is I've got that one. And I've got that one. So for me, what I'd do with this one is I'd have this side 
size up here and let's see if I can sign up, find a smaller size. Um, oh, hang on. I've got your smaller and same thing out of the paper pads and that'll sit in there. So easy when you've only got a small piece of paper. So what if we do it again with this one as well? Tuck you to the side, chop you off. Just and we'll just go through it again. So we don't, if I lift that up, sit that that way. I don't want, it is going that way, isn't it? Yes. Again, directional paper. All right. So I think I had about one and a half inches for my other one. Yeah, I say because I didn't measure, I just cut the first one off. So now we're recreating it. I want about one and a half inches. So just to go through it again, we'll mark our center point. I like my thinner lines than my bigger ones, uh, which is about there, isn't it? Yep. Put the two together, punch them both out together. Line them up. Get your thumb out of the way. Oh, more thumbs, more thumbs, more thumbs. Right. Beautiful. And I'm sorry. I'll say sorry again. I'm inking. Just so that you can see it. That's my excuse anyway, and I'm sticking to it. It's so that you can see where the thumb holes are. How's that? See, it's because I'm thinking of you. Right, very quickly. Don't need to do the bottom of that one. Again, exactly the same way. A little bit of glue at the top of this, just to join the two pieces of paper together. Lining it up on my grid. Just covering that thumb hole. That looks straight. Does from where I'm sitting. And if I look at it straight up, it's probably not. Right, there's our pocket. Straight down. Oh, my glue is not coming out beautifully. That's not very straight. No, oh, well. we get the idea. All right, and then on to that one. And what you've got is two little double pockets using very little paper or cardstock. How's that? How easy was that? So out of your 12 by 12, We've got all that and that. Don't look at the tags. Okay. And then there's your envelope. As I said before, I was thinking of stamping a um, something like, something like, oh, here we go. Something like that sort of stamp. And I always go that way because you'd think the stamp would be up there. Um, and that's an old Hero Arts one from 2010. But I quite often use that on my back of my envelopes. And then just putting a... Um, in my mind... There we go. In my mind, I wanted this one. This is this witchcrafter you do, and I love them. I use them all the time. You've seen me using them before. Um, this sort of one on here to make it look like an actual envelope. But as I said before, my brain then went off in a different tangent. And before I knew it, I was putting an eyelet in there and turning it into an actual little folio. But two little ones, very quick and easy to make. And we've, we've started decorating, as in we've got our little pockets in there 
ready to go. One 12 by 12 sheet. Again, great way to start using all those 12 by 12 sheets that if you're anything like me, you have lots of because we've all been down many rabbit holes and done lots of craft because that's who we are and what we are. And we have all these things saved from each time. Let's start using them. Let's hope to start using them. I am hoping to do some more tutorials real soon, but I am also getting my new workstation in the next two days, so I do have to clean up all my mess. And I mean all my mess. I have a very small area. Um, lots of boxes with bits hanging out, as in open boxes. So I will be cleaning up. I'm hoping to get back to you all real soon. And I may do one more tutorial on this workstation and then it'll all be on my new workstation. So you'll see how I won't be able to find anything. But you'll be surprised at what I will find when I'm cleaning up. So happy crafting, guys. And until next time, play hard. Bye.